This is Finnish Brutality. The mooses. Look! Oh, the the moose knuckle! <laughs> Finnish Brutality is one of the best shooting competitions in the world. It's a two gun match where you need to use your rifle and pistol to solve the stages. What makes it different from a normal two gun competition is that you have to solve a lot of physical and mental tasks that push your skill and stamina to the test. But that's not what it makes it the best. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you the whole story. Our Finnish brutality started at 5 a.m. in the morning when we arrived to the airport. We were just ready to do the check-in when we got the notification that our connecting flight from Frankfurt was cancelled. Samo used his excellent communication skills to secure us a direct flight just a couple of hours later. So, what do Slavic people do at the airport when they have to wait for a couple of hours? Hmm... We were so productive, we almost missed the flight. Another cheer and then time for a quick power nap. We woke up in Helsinki airport, got the guns and drove to Vrstileka. Now, if you've never been to Varosteleka before, besides the store, they have their own bar, Sotima. And yeah, you guessed it, this is our favorite place to hang out. <laughs> My favorite part is definitely catching up with all friends from all parts of the world. And very close second, drinking. In the evening, Varosteleka drivers picked us up and took us with all of the gear to the Lopi shooting range, where we, of course, continue drinking. Where the festivities continue long into the night. Friday morning starts with setting up the stages and other logistics for the match. This is also a time where the arrows will shoot the pre-match. Other competitors and VIPs now have time to check out their gear and set it up for tomorrow, while me and Samo are still passed out from the day before. We woke up just after 1 p.m. with a nice hangover. Let's take in some coffee and go zero the rifles. Now, most of the rifles should already be zeroed. What we are doing here is just checking how our rifles shoot with this specific ammo. And of course, if nothing was damaged during transport. I just had to do a couple of quick, precise adjustments for my AK and then we were spot on. And after shooting, you guessed it, it's time for drinking! <laughs> oh, and if you're wondering why everyone is running around naked, well, that's one of the best parts of this shooting range. It has its own sauna. Not sure why, but Finns love the sauna and it's a part of their culture. Yes, it looks kind of strange at first, but when you try it out, it's, it's just amazing. I love it. On Saturday morning, we woke up fresh and well rested. We only had a couple of minutes left to the beginning of the match, so we had to prepare our gear quickly and move to the stage to start the briefing. Last year I competed in the recon division, which required me to run 3 kilometers after each stage. This was so terrible and traumatic for me. I was super tired, exhausted, no energy left to socialize, to drink and to hang out with my buddies. The challenge was great and I'm happy that I did it, but I missed so much last year that this year I decided to keep my priorities with having fun and hanging out with my friends. 
And uh, when I was preparing the gear, like I burped a lot, and it was like the long drink from yesterday. I'm kind of sick, so. Yeah. Are you okay? No. Oh. Fuck. Why I drink so much? It's all Polnar fault. We listen to the briefing, and this stage is relatively simple. You have to throw the kettlebell and hit the targets. But since this is first day, first stage, everyone is a bit nervous. It's a normal response, and it happens to everyone. You get a surge of adrenaline, and your heart rate goes up. And everyone deals with this a bit differently. Some people go into hyperfocus, stare into the distance, double check their gear. Others like to make jokes or just talk with other competitors. Assemble this magazine, just like bump it here. Wait, 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 wait. Now, more force. Okay. Stage one starts in the Patria armored personnel carrier. You have the rifle unloaded with inserted magazine. On start, you take the kettlebell, run to the first shooting line, load the rifle, and you have to hit the target from prone. Secure the rifle, get up, throw the kettlebell, get the rifle and run to the next position. You have to repeat this until you get to the end of the marked area. What makes it different from a normal Casada drill is that here you have logs instead of lines and a lot of obstacles that will stop the kettlebell and slow you down. I made a couple of really good throws but I didn't want to use all of my force because I was afraid the kettlebell will hit one of the obstacles and deviate off course. If that happens you need to stop, get the kettlebell and bring it to your original position and then continue with the drill. When the kettlebell crossed the last line, you removed the magazine from the rifle and you had one bullet left to make a bonus shot. Solid hit. Now I have to take the kettlebell and run back to the APC, climb through the machine gunner opening, load my rifle again and make a bonus hit. I didn't realize it yet, but I was much faster on this stage than Ian or Mike. I do practice kettlebell throws with a heavier kettlebell than is usually used on the brutality, but I also think it's not all dependent on the throw. What actually makes a big difference is how fast can you go into the pro position, acquire a target and make a hit. Then you have to jump up as fast as possible and throw that kettlebell. If you are slow here, you are losing time on the whole stage. Oh, so... <laughs> the opening on the APC Hello, hello. I was is, trying to uh, order a pizza. It's very tight. So I just forced it up and catch the bag and has this assembly. Fuck. <laughs> you're the you're too thick. Too thick. T H I C. C. Alright, so you did it. Uh, let's see. 121. You, I, I just timed value? out. I, I got the high value. Okay. But then I then I timed out as I cocked the rifle. <laughs> So, we all got the high value target, which is important. Uh, and then you had a raw time of 124. I had a raw time of that's 172. Good. That's really good. And I got 180. And you hard out. Now we have to do the breacher shit. Normal uh, transmitter. So, it's just for demo purposes, it's just the weight and dimensions and everything is. Uh... Yeah. All right, it's not one of the spicy ones. Great success. So, Mr. Administrative Results, how was your stage? Oh, uh, you know, it was pretty good. Uh, did, a, did, a, did all right. Um, you know, it was my first, uh, not my first rodeo, so, yeah. You did good. <laughs> but seriously, PSR did an amazing job. This was his first brutality, and the mad lad even did a couple of stages shirtless. <laughs> Oh, we should start doing well, that again. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. We had yeah. yeah. 10 stages yeah. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Hard work, work. Hard work, work. In fact, Blue Jeans operator decided not to do the breacher category. It was too much work. <laughs> you see, Yari is the organizer. He is always trying to cheat. He's trying to game every move. That's despicable. Okay. This one survived this long. This is Finnish World War II. You think it'll be good? No. This is my e-tool. There are many like it, but this one is mine. And it's a piece of crap. 
This year, instead of running, we have breacher division. This is a subdivision of armor category. So besides carrying all of the weight, the plate carrier and the necessary equipment, you also have to do additional tasks after every stage. And the first task was digging foxholes. Everyone got an entrenching tool and you had 10 minutes to make as big of a hole as possible. Yeah, perfect. To perfect to die in. <laughs> Radius. Yes. Okay, so what was your take on the holes? That was fun. That was well, that was a lot more fun than running. True, I agree. I running agree. was awful. But you used math. Yes. To, I attacked to cheat. this challenge. No, not cheat. You had advantage. I strategized on this challenge through the power of math because we were being graded based on the volume, a cylindrical volume of the foxhole. And a cylinder increases in volume arithmetically with depth, but exponentially with diameter. So you're better off digging something that's shallow and very wide. Now the key was it couldn't be so shallow that they look at it and go, you're fucking cheating. No score. It had to be deep enough to be reasonable. But once you got it reasonably deep... The trick here is that right now when the vehicle is not moving, the best position will be to really squeeze up and get a solid position, but when the vehicle is moving, that will actually bump you. So I'm trying to get a position here independent from the vehicle and I have to be kind of like very soft with the movement and trying to hit. Easier said than done. Stage two starts with shooting from the back of a moving armored vehicle. Go, go, go! The Finnish Sisu. This thing is enormous. And the key here is not to use the vehicle as a support for your rifle because it's moving too much. What you have to do is you have to use your muscles to try to stabilize the rifle. Any hits that you make in this part of pre-stage count as a bonus. After that, you are allowed to make a tactical reload and wait for the beep. There are two metal targets at 80 meters and you have to hit each one two times from each obstacle. Sounds easy, but the floor was littered with clay pigeons that represented landmines. If you stepped on one or broke it, your stage ended there. You got a timeout and penalty for each target not hit. Ian was the unlucky one here as he managed to step on the mine and this got him so much penalties that it influenced his overall score for the whole match. If you managed to reach the sniper nest, there was a CAR-21 rifle waiting for you with a loaded mag. Well, my mag was empty. I was quite confused when the rifle went click. I had to diagnose the problem quickly and get another mag. Oh, it was having empty magazine! I successfully made the bonus shot, but this cost me unnecessary time. Now the only thing left is move back through the minefield, hit the targets, and you're finished with the stage. That's it? That's it, that's it, that's it. Time! The magazine was empty on the table. Empty? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Now to be fair, I was offered a reshoot for this stage, but since this year my priority was having fun, I didn't think it was necessary and turned it down. Yeah. Okay, New let's play. pick up Ian and go to the second breacher challenge. Giga's doing my push-ups for me, because he's <laughs> such a nice guy. It's okay, I'll do yours for you. You'll love the result. It's awesome about M90 in 5.56, the, the incorrect caliber. God's caliber. Eugene Stoner's caliber. Bud Light. Is it Mills Light? Oh, oh hey, Miller Light, Miller, Miller Light, yeah, Miller Light, Chili Millies. Chili Millies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chili Millies fucking pours up in the bathtub. Fuck yeah. Oh, some lovely man meat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know the issue here is motivation. 
because I've seen you in these matches and you will push yourself if you're motivated to. So I have a plan for motivation. So you're going to be here and I'm going to be counting from the side. <laughs> One, two, three. This is very easy. Do as many push-ups as you can in five minutes. One. Two. Even with all the extra gear and weight from the armor division, we all start quite strong. I think the key here is to do fast push-ups when you still have some strength. But after the first minute, things slow down. 20. You pause, breathe and try to do a couple more. Biggest load of bullshit ever. And here we see Yari struggling with push-ups. It's so nice to see him suffering as he is the mastermind behind all of these challenges. Luke is a beast. Look at him go. I think he beat us all on this challenge with 80 push-ups. Ian also did good. And here is my sorry ass trying to get at least one more push-up. Come on! He doesn't go. At the end, our arms were so tired that we physically just could not push ourselves up again. Almost. How many? Eight. 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 All right. 49. Eight. What? 49. All right. Who did 80? Uh, Luke. Oh, fuck. Before starting with the next stage, Jenny had a surprise for us. A challenge where we need to hum the Finnish national anthem correctly. The person who doesn't get it right will have to sing Barbie Girl. <laughs> Thank you. No surprise here, we all failed. Of course, nobody got it correctly Thank except you. Yari. Congratulations to the winner. <laughs> we have a reoccurring team here. A simple stage where you only have two VTEC barricades and you have to shoot through the openings and hit the targets. Simple, right? But of course, there has to be an element that makes it harder. You have to do this with a 45 kilogram rucksack. It doesn't sound that much, but when you put it on, the realization hits. Fuck. Okay. I think this stage went quite well for me. The singing part actually proved to be harder than first expected. What are you? I'm a puppy girl in a puppy world. <sighs> Everything is plastic. It's fantastic. <sighs> Fuck off. You're out of breath and you try to focus on aiming and hitting the target and then you also have to think about the lyrics of the Barbie girl song and try to sing it out loud. It's a special kind of challenge. What I love about this is that it was a fun challenge and everyone participated, except Ian. I don't know any songs. Sing What's the French, French national anthem? It's La Marseillaise, but I don't know it. And now they're not in the country again. Ian doesn't know how to sing. Happy birthday to me. And some other people really enjoy the singing part and actually I think it made them shoot better. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie park girl. My fantastic. They're plastic. They can cut my hair. They take me anywhere. I had a malfunction on this stage as the bolt did not go fully into battery. This is due to the modified ALG trigger that I installed in my rifle and that it's not really compatible with the 308 AKs. <gasps> The fucking plastic, it's, it's killing me! Oh. I knew about this before the match and if I have a really good hold on the rifle, usually that does not happen. But here, with a bad cheek weld and rifle not supported fully in my shoulder, you will see that the ball doesn't have enough energy and sometimes short strokes. It's fantastic! In the next evolution of Breacher, Ah! We did paratrooper burpees. This seems to be a Finnish version that I never tried before, but it looks simple. To complete one burpee, you have to put your hands high up in the air, then go down prone with your face towards the ground and arms fully extended. Then you have to get up, hands extended in the air, then back down, lying on your back, arms fully extended, and again stand up with hands in the air. Only then you complete one full burpee. It looks deceivingly simple and it's easy when you start, but it just progressively gets worse and worse. <laughs> to get a good result you have to push, but be careful to not step on a frog. 
<laughs> Good thing I checked my handgun. It was full of sand. Holy fuck. The breacher division has to complete all tasks with complete gear minus the rifle. This means you have to have your handgun holstered while you're doing the drills. Good thing I thought about this before starting the next stage because my handgun was full of sand. A quick shaky shaky tappy tappy and we're good to go. This is the result of the breacher division. Stage 4 is a perfect example of a saying that Calvin hates. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. I came here to have fun and enjoy the match. So I start this stage with an easy sprint and we are neck and neck with Ian and Mike. The shooting part here was relatively easy with big targets at close range. I could probably do it faster, but there was no need. A full powered battle rifle was definitely not a disadvantage here. Double taps were not allowed here as you had to make one hit per target and move to the next one. Even if we had to do multiple consecutive shots, I don't think that would be an issue since the recoil was so soft and barely noticeable. Fast shooting put me in the lead and I was first to reach the casualty. Here you can again see my mindset on these and other stages. I'm not rushing it, I'm actually enjoying the moment and applying the tourniquet correctly. Only after I make it extra super tight, I properly secure it and then move on. Ian actually did an amazing job here and gained a bit of advantage over my time. We are neck and neck on the first shot, but on a second one, Ian takes more time to acquire the target and make a hit. He rushes the third shot and misses. Usually it pays off to make a slow Lower hit than a fast miss. For the bonus shot you have to remove the magazine so only the last round is left in the chamber and you have to make a shot on a very small popper. Now the only thing left is to run to the other bay and clear the dueling tree. I do a lot of handgun shooting so I was not that pleased with my performance. It's interesting to compare my actual run with my perceived performance because I saw that other people also had problems and were slower on the dueling tree than I was. Mike was really struggling with the last part and even had to make a reload. Now I know Though he's a great pistol shooter, so I think that old high power was not the best choice for this match. No penalties. Yeah, maybe I should learn how to shoot pistol. Woo! Dobra, dobra. Wow. Excellent. Impressive, man. What? That was impressive. Thanks. Directly, directly. Directly, yeah. These breacher challenges were amazing. The tasks were simple and not too physically demanding. But the trick was, if you wanted to get a good score, you had to give it your best. So essentially, you created your own torture. The goal with this one was to make as many jumps over this wooden fence as possible in two minutes. It's interesting to see how we all start with very big and unnecessary movements. We are losing too much energy and we're struggling to get to the other side. Now over the course of this drill you get more and more tired. You get slower, you lose balance and you start making mistakes. But then something interesting happens. When you're tired your body wants to spend the least amount of energy which reflects in your movement. The important part here was avoiding to get your nuts crushed. But once we figured the best technique of using your plate carrier and magazines to ride over the fence, we actually started to make faster repetitions at the end of this competition than at the beginning. Five, four, three, one, two, one, time! This pistol stage was very confusing. You had to shoot the targets that had flashing green lights and you only had around 15 seconds to hit them before they went off. We started in the middle position with both legs on a wooden plank. I lost balance just when the timer went off, so I was not even sure if I start or I should repeat it. Then the lights didn't turn on immediately, so I was not sure what's happening. I think this was an intended feature. There were some times where no lights were flashing, so you awkwardly had to wait. And there were other times where two or even three lights were flashing at the same time. To make this stage even more complicated, you could only shoot from the middle position when standing only with one leg on the wooden plank. At first I was worried about this, but then I quickly figured that you can come to the middle position, put one leg on the plank, acquire your target and then just before you shoot you raise the other leg. It's relatively fast and if you do it correctly you can make a clean shot 
without even losing the balance. This stage required 24 shots for a clean run. This means you had to make at least one reload. When my pistol went empty, I had a sense of urgency trying not to miss the next target, so I instinctively made a fast emergency reload, throwing the empty mag on the ground. I was already at the next target when I realized the mistake, so I waited for the next opportunity, picked up the mag, shot the target and stowed it away safely when I had time. Good thing I did this before the end of the stage, otherwise I would get a 60 second penalty. No bueno. Phenomenal shooting. Thanks. That was sweet. That bit spicy monkey chunks. Uh, one. Uh, one. I, <laughs> the last breacher of the day. Our cameraman almost missed the whole thing because he had to take a massive dump. <coughs> I mean, um, <coughs> he had technical issues. Nothing too exciting here. You just had to fill up three sandbags as fast as possible and bring them back to your starting point. <gasps> As this was the end of shooting for today, we were all waiting for the next best thing. Beer, beer, we want beer, lots of beer now, lots of beer now, beer, beer, we want beer, lots of beer now, lots of beer. Come on, you let other people have fun, guys. Fucking American cunts. So, Finnish brutality wins, Link's brutality loses. Cheers. Fuck you. Keep this. I did not agree to this. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> oh, I don't need a girlfriend anymore. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Stage 6. First stage of the day. The hangover was not as bad as yesterday, but I was still not at 100%. I don't wish him any penalties more than are necessary to be just behind me. I started slow and sluggish on the handgun. There was no reason to aim so long as the targets were big poppers not that far away. I made the hits easily, stored the magazine and made a dash to the next position. Even with full gear for armored division, the climbing rope was not that hard. The trick is to use your boots to lock up on the rope and push your weight up with your legs instead of pulling with your arms. Also, with my experience with ropes, I never use gloves unless I'm fast roping or repelling. And here you can see why. Gloves usually provide less friction on the rope than your bare hands. Yari did the correct thing here to remove the gloves, but it cost him a lot of valuable time. And then it came time for the dreaded spinner. To my surprise, I only needed two hits to spin it over. I was so excited about this that it gave me extra energy and just started sprinting as fast as possible. After making all of the required hits from the tire, I removed the magazine and with last round in the chamber, I had to hit the bonus target. It was a very small steel plate at around 70 meters and I was shooting from an unstable shooting platform. So this was probably the first and only time in this match that I used my 3 times magnifier to help me make the shot. Bam! Perfect hit! Shout out for Holosan for making great optics. I was sprinting back so fast that I actually overtook some of the social media guys and when I went prone behind the sniper rifle, they were actually still down range. That's why you can see me pause here before inserting the magazine and loading the rifle. I didn't lose too much time because of this, so I didn't see the need to do a reshoot, but this stage was a prime example of why I was so surprised that I won this match. Usually these kind of small problems pile up and amount to a big difference in your score. Combat squads were probably the hardest breacher task, so I was glad to see that Varosteleka provided me with my very own Grand Thumb Waifu pillow. This gave me an immense moral support and provided well need cushioning for a butt. But after the first minute, all the fun was gone. Besides the full gear for armored division, we also had to carry a 25 kilo sandbag. But all joking aside, I would actually love to see Grand Thumb on one of the next brutality challenges here in Finland. Varosteleka, make it happen. And what we have here, CEO Vorosteleka receiving a complimentary hand job from one of his staff. 70. All right. Oh, <laughs> too bad. One over the funny number. <laughs> For your match. 
Yeah. Finish brutality 23. It's better than running. <lacht> ja, man. Eine riesen Aussagekraft hat über deine, deine körperliche Konstitution. Ja. Ähm, da sieht man auch, dass so gut wie bei jeder Bewegung die Griffkraft eine sehr große Rolle spielt. Maschine. I bet all my money on you now. 20 reps. How's it going? But you never trained this, so you fucking. <laughs> Thus far, we neither of us have felt disadvantaged by shooting three away on this. No, not really. This um, advan a big advantage on the spinner because we can get that over in two shots, and it was difficult to see. So the less you had to shoot at it, the better. Yeah, um, I would say. Uh, most people would think that 308 would be a disadvantage because of recoil. Yeah. But essentially, like we're shooting 123 grain bullets, which are very light shooting. And also, I have a muzzle brake, you have an adjustable gas system, Ian has a very nicely tuned rifle. And also, you're, you're not shooting at close range targets, and you do not have to do repeated hits yep. on the same target. Always, always yeah. a one, two, one, two transition. So you have to move to take another shot. So you have to move the rifle. And I would say that the biggest disadvantage with the 308 here is for you, I think it's the length. Yeah, but it's not been bothering me as much as I thought it would. Okay. And for me, I would say it's the weight of the rifle. Yeah, yours is heavy. Yeah. It, well, it's as heavy as yours, but it's not as nimble. Like with a with a very light to the tree, you can be very fast from target to target. Mm -hmm. And that's like, but that's a portion of the stage. Yeah. Okay. I've suffered more from my gear than from the 308. Like this is is shocking for shouldering, and I've had problems with my LARP original holster. Uh, but the rifle has been like would consider unironically bringing it again when not LARPing. Yeah, if if any of the stage if, if any of the stages will have a spinner, I I would really prefer a 308. Yeah, it, it was a simple two shots and it was over. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Administrative Results, your comments, 308? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. what kind of spinner are we talking about here, man? <laughs> Ooh, yes. <laughs> Love it. Uh, gay China boy. A <laughs> 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 uh, loser has to carry an ammo box with them during the whole stage. Simon says, Floor is lava. Ivan was like a true silent professional. He was calm, quiet, and always lurking somewhere in the background. We almost forgot he was here, but then, when it was time to go, he went full in. Despite carrying the additional ammo can and some other difficulties, Ivan still managed to get an amazing 10th place overall and 4th place in the breacher category. Big respect. Restekpa. For me, stage 7 was highly affected by the squats that we had to do beforehand. You can clearly see that I'm struggling to even get up on the sisu, and when I jumped down, my legs almost gave up. You can also see my sluggish movement. I was fast to go down into prone position, good at shooting, but then really struggling to get up fast. Thinking about this now, this was definitely more of a psychological than actual physical limitation. I was just tired and lazy. I was not counting on winning this competition, so in my mind, it didn't really make sense to put in 100%. Here you can also see the harsh, sharp finish sand. This thing goes into everything and it's very coarse and can make your gun sluggish. Since my rifle was already weak at cycling because of the trigger, the sand just made it worse and I actually had a couple of malfunctions of the bolt failing to go into battery. So when I pressed the trigger, the hammer fell, but nothing happened. So essentially I had a dead gun and I had to cycle the bolt manually to chamber another round and to cock the hammer. This was quite annoying, but also cost me some valuable time. Fuck off! The couple malfunctions that I had were actually not because of the sand and dirt in the rifle, but uh, it's connected to the trigger. I used this ALG trigger on a 308 rifle, and it's not a perfect fit. I did uh, kind of adjust it a bit, but when the bolt goes back, it kind of catches on the trigger and it has less force coming forward. So if I don't have the rifle completely shouldered properly with full force, it will short stroke and sometimes doesn't go 
fully into battery. So that's why you see when I was shooting standing up, no problem, but when I was prone, I didn't have the rifle properly shouldered, and when I shot in that position, it malfunctioned. The real star of this stage was Mr. Admin Results. Just look at this majestic jump. The targets have no chance at all. Hit after hit, he runs to the sandbags. And just look at that raw power. But on a serious note, Admin really did amazing in this match. He came in 8th place overall and 2nd place in the open division. I'm not sure what his secret sauce is, but I'm suspecting Pervitin. Yeah. <sighs> oh, hi, Polinar. Well, hi, Polinar. Hello. Oh. The next breacher was apparently simulating bringing a Bangalore torpedo to the front line and pushing it over the barbed wire. But what it really was, was a sadistic way to make us bang our knees over the sharp rocks. Really, this was worse than kneeling on Legos. Stage 8 was terrible for me. The starting position was prone with your face touching the ground. The rifle was loaded and secured in the rack next to the shooter. From the experience of the last stage, I fully extended my buttstock. It was fine for the first couple of shots and then it started. The combination of a sluggish bolt with the wrong trigger group was just made worse with this coarse sand. It looks like moon dust and gets everywhere. And this is not dirt, this is proper sand. It's sharp and gritty and it will increase friction. For my already anemic rifle, this was too much. What made the issue even worse is that the bolt movement was so slow and soft that I didn't really feel when it stopped out of battery. You can see that the resistance of the bolt is so big that I have to pull and push with my hand to cycle it completely. As if malfunctions were not enough for this stage, I also had to fumble the reload. Oh. The crawling part was easy for me. I just plowed through and then later in the day I used copious amounts of beer to ease the pain of my battered knees and elbows. That's it? Yes. The combination of sluggish bolt, me not shouldering the rifle properly and of course this wonderful sand over here made my rifle choke. Thank you. Thank you. And then here. Ooh. Hey Rex. What was your final time on that, man? 89. Fuck yes! I knew you'd get that. <laughs> I feel like through. I got through the, the barbed wire pretty fast. I did clip my, hey, uh, clip my ear pro a couple times. This may or may not be our time to shine. Yeah. The, the gnomes, it's a gnome yeah, competition yeah, between the three of us. This one is ours. I say that one is the best. Okay, did you, did you hear? He said that one is the best. Okay. I'm quite disappointed in my next breacher evolution. Not that I didn't do well, I just lacked the motivation and proper attitude. The task was simple. Use the sledgehammer to whack the tire and move it as far as possible in two minutes. This should be a work of will and stamina. But instead of pushing it, for some reason, I decided to go easy. This seems to be my mindset for the whole match, as I never expected to get any high scores because of the multiple problems I got through the match. And now, looking back at this breacher challenge, I do feel a bit of shame and regret. But anyway, still better than running. That was a really good run, man. Thank you. Really I didn't good. vomit. <sighs> I couldn't see you in the distance there. So the thing was, but you I had, you had, I think you had the best position. Well, what you didn't see was that when your back was turned, I filled the inside of your tire with rocks. Ah. Uh, no, it was. <laughs> you guys look a little tired. Oh no no no! It's really awesome. I love this. Much better oh, than running. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. You're too tired to even get the tired pun. Yeah. <laughs> You're not even a dad. You're not allowed to make dad jokes like that. But Luke is, Luke, Luke is just full of energy. Look at him. Like he really, I thought he was like 25 at most. Luke? Yeah. Oh shit, how old is he? 34. 34. Oh, okay. He doesn't look How old, old are you? 34. Oh, well, the Got a 20% age handicap. Look, Sonny, back in my day. The problem is the tire weighs more than print. Look at the balls of the tire. Back in my day, we had to hammer a stone wheel using It'll a stone axe. It'll tell you if it's the tire. Yeah, but he <laughs> is hitting it 83 times harder than any of us. Boom. Boom. Do a rematch? No, no, no. No. Okay. Yeah. 
Yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> Time for the second challenge uh, of the day. Uh, the challenge is to draw a page in 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bands up, bands up, time's up. Okay, pass the, pass the draw into a friend. Pass the draw into a friend. Is this intentional? Chica, Anybody where's else? yours? Make the most game <laughs> We have to trade. No, look, look, I look, saw. look. Is this intentional? Show like, I, I was not able to draw. I like this one. Fuck, this yeah. one. Excellent. We have a winner. Or Artists not. will take a shot of chili sauce uh, just when you are making ready before the stage. And then Naga Jalokia, which is probably from the ghost chili. And then they have to chug them before the stage. Stage 9 starts with a shot of hot sauce. For starters, you have to carry these two weights to the first shooting bay. You can see Mike obviously cheating here, because the briefing explained that you are not allowed to use the handles. The goal here was to get you confused and bloke over the ears. The wooden block had an array of numbers and letters that you had to memorize. Right after that, you had to successfully spin the spinner. This was done intentionally, as this target requires a lot of concentration and skill. I feel like that if I would only focus on the spinner, I would easily forget my array of numbers and letters. So besides trying to turn that damn thing around, I was also repeating my numbers and letters in my head. Oh, and don't forget the hot sauce. My mouth, throat and ears were burning. 8 hits, 2 misses, 10 shots all together was enough to get it going and I was off to the next bay. Now I just have to get past this car. Oh, what the actual fuck? These flames were not just for show, they were super fucking hot. I honestly did not expect that. Now let's go back to the target. Uh... What's my array of numbers and letters again? Um, beep beep, my brain is in a full processing mode right now. Please hold. It took me uncomfortably long to get all those required for hits, but I didn't want to get any penalties for hitting the wrong target. Now let's run back. That was hot. I was quick to finish with the last array of targets because I already knew how to identify them. And if you're finished, unload it, you're clear. Ah, damn the spicy meatballs. That was, oh, that was interesting. Love it. You did really good. Cool. What a nice guy. This breacher challenge was kind of like a bonus. The point was to get you tired, but there was no need to compete in speed. It was just evaluated if you passed or not. We had to form in groups of three and a log was assigned to us. Apparently all logs were equal, just some were more equal than others. Once we lifted the log, we were not allowed to put it on the ground until the drill ended. The exercises required a bit of strength and good coordination. But these were actually quite fun to do in this setting. Oh, don't drop it. Time for the last mini challenge of the day. The last challenge is that you have to say varusteleka as correctly as possible. Varusteleka. 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 We have a winner, and the winner will get a cold bucket oh, oh sorry bucket of cold water poured onto them and at make ready and the winner is Yari yeah. the last stage of the match a typical brutality design we have to hit the metal targets throw the sandbag over the bar go under the bar and hit the targets on the other side and then repeat the process until you get the required hits or you time out before we look at my run at this stage, let's look at some others first. We can see Yari over here getting a nice morale boost. Trust me, he enjoys these things. 
The more it sucks, the better it is. Not a strong start, a couple of misses, and look at that slow, sluggish movement. What's happening over here? Does his back hurt? Wow, so slow, barely even moving. Is Yari even trying? I expected more from the last year's Recon Division winner. I guess we'll have to make a special division at our Lynx competition next year just for Yari and his disabilities. But in all seriousness, Yari is a beast. He's always carrying more weight than required and he uses his real loadouts that he uses for work as a reserve officer in Finnish military. He doesn't gain the stages, but rather treats them as a scenario-based training. He takes everything a little bit too serious, but in a good way. And the real reason why he looks like he's struggling a bit this year is that he injured both of his legs before this match. His shins were split open and bleeding everywhere. And instead of going to the ER to get stitches, this mad lad did the whole two days of brutality with the breacher challenges and everything. Like this guy is legit crazy. I think Yari personifies the Sisu spirit and I have big respects for him. But also, take it easy sometimes, man. Hey. And we can't finish this video without mentioning Paige. This was her first brutality match and she did amazing. You must realize that the stages are designed the same for everyone. That means that the same heavy sandbag is used for me or for Paige. And she's smaller and probably half my weight. Did that stop her? No way. She pushed through, performed great and even did it with some humorous commentary during the way. There we go! We should adjust this everyone's height! I load the handgun and look at that pause there. I was actually thinking of not engaging the level to retention. Nah, we play fair and fairness is always punished. I think I had a perfect run on this stage, so all the shots were hits, no misses. You can see me really run here in high gear, despite it's the last stage. My secret sauce was seeing Mr. Administrator results running this stage just before me. He was burning it down, just going full sand. And for some reason, possibly a bit homoerotic, that inspired me. I was full of motivation and determined to give it my all. At the end, I think Admin actually beat me at this stage by a second, but for me this was still a perfect ending for the best shooting competition in the world. Katin, have you finished? <sighs> Unload from it here. Thank you. Come down, hold it. Just did the last stage and I just tried to put all of my energy in it. I'm tired. My legs barely hold me up. I did a good time, but Admin beat me. He's the master of throwing the, the sandbags. Uh, he was really good. Respect. Mr. Admin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations, you beat me on this stage. Oh, did I? Yeah. You're, you're a professional in throwing oh, sandbags. Yeah, it's, just, um, it's, it's what we call a big chimp power, they're like the harness. <laughs> I, saw, I saw your run and you inspired me because like, I'm really out of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you oh, for reason I will, doing breacher. Yeah, I will fucking do my... Oh, like, yeah. yeah, but it was really good. You, you were cooking, it, dude, and all this full kit. How much do you weigh? How much do you weigh? <laughs> too much! He weighs too much. <laughs> You see, it's not just about the fancy guns, the tough challenges, or alcohol. Copious amounts of alcohol. It's also about good people and good atmosphere. It's about the whole experience. It's about hanging out and shooting the match with this crazy bunch. You see, it's not a journey to Finland that it's important. It's all the friends that we made along the way. Oh, and I owned everyone by winning the whole damn match. But first, let's go to the final breacher and finish this thing. And then breacher! Oh wait, so when we're doing Breacher, we don't have guns anymore, we're not shooting. Can I drink beer? <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> That's the real thing. The last task was to breach the imaginary door. Breach. Since I drank a couple of beers before this challenge, this felt super easy. I guess beer gives me superpowers. This felt like cheating. <laughs> what? I don't know what Roshalik is putting this beer, but I guess it's working. Go Ian! This was an outstanding year. This yeah. year was amazing. Breacher was hard, but also fun. Yes. Better the stages were good. We're so excited about Breacher, we're not yeah. even thinking about the stages that were the main attraction, and they were outstanding. The props were good. We had a casualty. A yep. live casualty. A burning vehicle. Only one live casualty who was intended <laughs> to be a casualty, fortunately. Very good acting. We had fire. Uh, we had electronic targets. Sisu. Uh, 
We had an armored APC. Yeah, that we like, had an armored truck. Shooting from an armored vehicle is always fun. That, that's like where, where else can you do that? We had shooting from the move on the back of the Sisu. Ah, close. Ah, this oh, yeah. is a great end to a great match. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Fantastic. So, we will see you all here next year. I was on my fourth beer here already and quietly hoping that maybe, just maybe, I could get a third place in armor division. Nope, seems that I didn't make it. Makes sense since I had so many problems during the match and I was definitely not on my top game during this competition. And then comes the surprise! Vega! <laughs> But wait, there's more! Okay. 